So we've already talked about the pumpkin shortage this fall. Now get ready for a very expensive Thanksgiving. Turkey prices are expected to reach record highs this year. Rebecca Jarvis explains what's behind the rising costs. This morning, signs of turkey trouble. The cost of the Thanksgiving staple spiking, hitting a new record high as the bird flu and inflation ruffle feathers. It definitely causes a whole lot of stress. I've never been not able to get the turkeys that I've wanted. The retail price for boneless, skinless turkey breast more than doubling, now near $7 a pound. It's really a combination of issues that are leading to these record high prices this year. One that's having the largest influence is an outbreak of high path avian influenza, which has led to a decline in the number of turkeys that are being grown. A particularly bad outbreak of the bird flu wreaking havoc on farms. Nearly 47 million birds affected across 40 states. If your turkeys end up with bird flu, any other poultry on the farm, whether it's meat chickens, egg layers, they all have to be exterminated. And that's just not only a huge financial loss, that's just a really sad situation. On top of that, farmers facing their own rising costs. Whether it's um, utilities or groceries or building materials, everything has gone up incredible. But experts say there's still ways to save money on your feast. Perhaps think about getting a frozen bird rather than a fresh turkey this year. Ways to, to really stretch that dollar so that we can all be together but still have that traditional Thanksgiving dinner. It's now post tropical cyclone and Ian is hitting parts of southeast after leaving behind a trail of destruction in Florida. Coming up, the latest on the efforts to rescue survivors. Live from Dallas-Fort Worth, this is WFAA News. And thanks for sticking around for this second half hour of WFAA News at 4. I'm Damon Fernandez.
We begin with new information on Ian. Today, that storm made another landfall, this time in South Carolina. The state's governor has already issued a state of emergency, and the storm's making history as one of the top 10 strongest on record to hit Florida Wednesday. At least 21 people have died. About 2 million people are still without power. Today, crews continue the search for survivors. One woman and her mother were stranded for 24 hours standing on top of a car as those water levels rose. I thought I was going to die right there. And the car was, was like wiggling while we're both holding on and holding the dog in the middle. Now, Florida's governor says there has been more than 700 rescues so far. And Kyle, I know you and the weather team have been monitoring Ian and its twists and turns. Now, as it hits the Carolinas, could we expect more of the same? Uh, you're going to expect some, still some wind, some rain, uh, potential for flooding, potential for those, you know, tropical tornadoes. Yeah. Uh, still going to be some, some waves along the coast, a little bit of flooding from the uh, storm surge and things like that. Yeah. But, I mean, it, of course, people that have to go through it, you know, that's, that's not good of a situation. But I, I can kind of say the worst, for the most part, is starting to be get behind us, at least in terms of what the storm is going to bring to uh, parts of the U.S. I mean, the winds are going to continue to decrease. Rainfall will continue to be heavy. Of course, that can cause some flash flooding problems, but it's not nearly as strong of a storm as what it was earlier today and obviously what it was a couple days ago. It did make landfall. It's third landfall, one o'clock this afternoon, or around one o'clock this afternoon near Georgetown, which is kind of between Charleston and Myrtle Beach there along the uh, South Carolina coast. It's a category one with wind speeds of 85 miles an hour. It's the first landfalling hurricane in South Carolina since Matthew back in 2016, and it's the third landfall that Ian has made. The first, remember, was back in the western part of Cuba as a category three storm, and then, of course, it made landfall in Florida earlier this week as category four moved across Florida, back out in the Atlantic, intensified again to a hurricane made the landfall in South Carolina earlier this afternoon. Now it is considered a post-tropical cyclone. What does that mean? Well, that means it's just starting to lose its tropical characteristics, but it still has strong winds and obviously still going to bring some heavy rainfall and even some of those tropical tornadoes to parts of the country as well. So it's not like it's just going to immediately disappear, but it is signs that it is starting to weaken and it will continue to do so as it heads up through the Carolinas and eventually into the Virginias uh, before the weekend is over. So by tomorrow afternoon, I mean, wind speeds of 25, but there will still be heavy rain potentially for parts of the Carolinas and then up the east coast through the weekend as well. Obviously not affecting our weather here. Our weather is beautiful. How about this? The coolest morning of fall so far headed your way. We'll talk about that when I return. All right, Kyle, thanks so much. You know, one man is sharing his story after he says he was robbed through a text message. Now, he thought he was he thought that message was from his bank, and now he's warning about thieves using Zelle to target victims. Here's ABC's Will Reeve. It happened so quickly. Marcus Miles says his bank account was drained after he got a text message that seemed to be from his real bank, Capital One. I was caught off guard, but I might as well have just walked out my front door and given all of my money to the first person that I saw. The text reading, did you attempt a $500 Zelle transfer? Zelle is a mobile payment transfer service embedded in your banking app that allows you to send money to people directly between bank accounts. But Miles said he hadn't sent any money, so he was eager to talk to who he thought was his bank. I was convinced because uh, he kept saying, looks like someone has, is accessing from an IP address in Texas. Looking back, 16 minutes worth of manipulation and boy, was he good. He then received a text to confirm his username and login. Because I was getting a text, um, I actually was sending it back. Moments later, his account empty. His story one of many from across the country. Who the heck would have all that information? Demi Woods, speaking to our station WLS in Chicago, lost $3,500. Our San Francisco 7 on your side unit hearing from dozens of consumers. Lawmakers are now working to make these money transfers safer. Congress is considering a draft proposal to ensure that consumers who get induced into scams have protection and get their money replenished by the banking industry or whatever platform they've used. Zelle is out with its own TikTok, reminding customers that their banks will never call for personal info because they already have it. And if the caller says it's urgent, question it. 